now is uh, hear from Amnon and the great work that the Mobileye team is doing today and their vision for the future. If we could hear from them now. Thank you, Pat. I really wish I could be here today. As you mentioned, autonomous driving really has the potential to revolutionize almost every aspect of our life. But in fact, no one knows how the future industry will unfold. Is it going to be a robot taxi that will rule the streets of cities? Or will it be consumer level autonomous vehicles that will be the dominant stream? Again, no one has the answer for that today, but with our unique strategy and technological assets, mobilize position to win, to win both, both camps. With that in mind, let me walk you through the main building blocks of our technology. Now, the first, the first pillar of our uh, technology is the sensing, the, the, the perception. So on the right, we have our uh, integrated AV uh, vehicle, which is going to be launched uh, next year as a robot taxi uh, service. Now, this vehicle has two layers of uh, sensors working independently from each other at the perception, at the perception level. The first layer is, uh, is, is cameras. There are 11 cameras around, uh, around the car, front, rear, and surround. Some of the cameras are behind the windscreen, some of the cameras are in the body of uh, the vehicle, the mirror, and some of the cameras are on the top, uh, top roof mo uh, module. The second layer is long-range uh, LADAR sensors uh, using our partner uh, Luminar and uh, short-range uh, flash uh, LADARs uh, as well on the body of, uh, of the vehicle and a few radar uh, sensors that provide a second layer. Now, each layer performs independently. They do not rely on each other in order to get a redundant uh, system. Now, the, the ability to work independently with two subsystems has another advantage, and that advantage is to influence the evolution of driving assist. So on the left, we have uh, Zeker 001, which is a brand of uh, Geely, going to be launched uh, later this year, 2020, uh, 2021. It has 11 cameras around, uh, around the vehicle, you know, very high resolution cameras, eight megapixel uh, cameras. It's well hidden in the, in the vehicle. Uh, some of it behind the windscreen, uh, some in the two in the mirror, parking uh, cameras on the rear fin, there is a, a camera. So 11 cameras around the, around the vehicle, both long range and, uh, and parking. Two uh, powerful IQ5 chips. Uh, powering all the perception of, uh, of the system. And, and this provides a level two plus, the ability to drive hands-free, but with the supervision of a, of a driver that is continuously uh, agile and continuously alert, but have the full functional scope from highways to arterial roads to, uh, to urban roads, all covered by the same technology, by the same subsystem of the camera subsystem and the car on my right, which is going to be a robot taxi system, a full level four uh, vehicle. So by, by, by moving along this spectrum of driving assist and, uh, and, and level four gives us a lot of uh, flexibility on, 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 on supporting the scale, economical scale and geographic scale of uh, the system. Now our second core pillar of our AV is all about uh, mapping. So we're using uh, vehicles equipped with our um, ADAS uh, systems at scale. So these uh, dr uh, driving assist uh, systems are responsible of sending very low bandwidth uh, uh, data and to build maps uh, on the cloud. And these maps are like gold. They let us drive anywhere in the world, but also tells us how humans actually drive. Most recently, we brought our AVs to uh, New York City, one of the most challenging driving environments in, in the world. And we're driving in uh, Detroit, Munich, Tokyo, China, and soon, and soon Paris. All because we have a map that is produced and continuously updated at a very, very low cost using uh, crowdsourced uh, capabilities. The scalability we get from our AV maps is, is really un unparalleled. And last but not least is our responsibility sensitive safety based driving policy. That driving policy supports fast scaling to all regions around the world with different driving uh, cultures and give us the balance of safety and usefulness that we believe will make our AVs welcome on streets around the world, both in robot taxis and very soon on consumer AVs. In this example, we see how the AV exercises caution around occluded areas. Let's take a closer look at how RSS rule number four works. 
Be cautious in areas with limited visibility. Here, as the AV approaches the crosswalk, there is a parked van occluding the AV's view of the sidewalk. Here, we apply RSS rule number four, which states that the AV should assume that there may be a pedestrian behind the occlusion. In other words, the van might be blocking our view of a pedestrian entering the crosswalk. Because of rule number four, the AV begins decelerating even though there is no pedestrian in sight. Reasonable worst case assumptions for pedestrians at a crosswalk are two kilometers per hour for their maximum speed and two meters per second squared for their maximum acceleration. The AV begins decelerating accordingly. After the AV does in fact detect a pedestrian, it continues to decelerate until coming to a full stop in order to give way to the pedestrian. Had the AV not made this assumption on what might exist behind the occlusion, it might not have had enough time to decelerate once the pedestrian had come into view.